Let's go build a solar generator. So you want to build a solar generator. Great. So you've watched a whole bunch of videos and you're ready to run out to Harbor Freight and buy a bunch of stuff. Stop. Stop. So YouTube is a great place for learning and sharing ideas, but there's also really not much of a filter out there. There's some good information and there's some bad information, but there's a lot of videos out there that just don't make any sense. And I'm going to show you why. So if you just want a quick, easy solution, the simplest thing to do is go buy an EcoFlow Delta. They're on sale right now for about 650 bucks. It's an all-in-one solution. My brother-in-law just bought one. I got to play with one over Christmas. They've got rapid charge. They're a 1800 watt inverter, 1200 watt hour battery life. You know, I did the math to see if I could build something cheaper than I could buy that for, and I can, but not buy much. So that's the quick, easy solution. Check out an EcoFlow Delta. I'll put a link down below. Okay, so let's say you really, really want to build something. You really want to save some money, you just, but you don't really understand what all the numbers mean, you know? So there's a million different videos on DIY solar generators, but let me throw some specs out there that I think are the baseline for an emergency system. You need a 1000 watt inverter capable of a 1500 watt surge. That's pretty easy with a 1000 or 1200 watt hour battery and 200 watts of solar. I find it hard to think of a system with a smaller capacity than that being actually useful for any sort of emergency situation. Now, everyone's scenario is different, but to me, that's a baseline. 1,000 watt inverter, 1,000 watt hour battery, 200 watts of solar. The EcoFlow matches all of those, but you know you can build it, and I'm going to sort of step you through those things. If you're not convinced that those numbers are right, then buy a kilowatt or watts up watt meter, plug it into whatever you want to run and let it go for 24 hours. I've got a video that shows you how to do it, but basically you take this meter, plug it into the wall, plug your refrigerator into it and let it go for 24 hours. And it will accumulate like an odometer and it will show you how much power your device pulls over a period of time. You may be surprised with what you find. All right, you want to get building? Let's get started. Number one failure, picking the wrong battery. There is no reason any longer to use a lead acid or car battery for an emergency system, or actually for really for anything, unless, in my opinion, it's a very, very small or DC only application that is outdoors. Lead, like, you know, a deer feeder or, a, you know, wireless something or other. Lead acid batteries are a little bit more temperature tolerant than lithiums, but for, and I do use them for some radio equipment because they're cheap and they're durable, um, but for an emergency type system, there is no reason to use lead acid batteries any longer. Lithium batteries are so cheap now, they are really the best option for any sort of build. Make sure that if you buy a lithium battery that you get one that has a 100 amp BMS because that will limit your inverter later. So the very first system that I built was with lead acid batteries. It was right after the freeze. I paid $170 for a 100 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. You can now get lithium batteries for rubbing right up on the $200 mark. Make sure that you get one that's got the 100 amp BMS. But 170 versus, you know, 220 for a lithium battery. By the way, my lead acid batteries weigh 65 pounds a piece. 
and I have two of them. So really, if you look at the, you know, the price is not much of a consideration any longer. The, uh, the power output, the power density that you get out of them is just so much greater. So there is just no reason to use a lead acid battery any longer. Also, there are videos out there of people using car batteries. That is absolutely the wrong solution uh, for an emergency system unless it's a dire, 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 dire emergency. The reason why is because car batteries are designed to supply a whole bunch of current for a short period of time. They're not designed to run over long periods of time, low current over long periods of time. A typical car battery, I drive a Honda Fit, which the car battery is about that big. A typical car battery only has between like a 50 maybe an 80 amp hour capacity unless you drive a great big truck so you're you're not having any sort of benefit but by using a car battery so go lithium just do it spend a couple extra dollars the the pros far outweigh the the few extra dollars that you'll spend batteries part two picking a battery that is too small I see this a whole bunch, and this will tie into inverters. Getting a battery that is too small. Again, to me, the minimum threshold for an emergency system is 100 amp hours, period. Yeah, that's just anything smaller than that is really just not going to do you any good. Uh, I've seen videos of people buying 3000 watt inverters and hooking them up to like a 30 amp battery. Uh, I just get our 30 amp hour battery. I just got back from Harbor Freight and that's the problem. The biggest battery that Harbor Freight sells is a 33 amp hour and the biggest inverter that they sell is like 3000 watts. So someone will go to Harbor Freight and buy a the big the only battery that they have and the biggest inverter they have it will probably not work anyway if you tried to pull 3000 watts off of it but if it did it would last for about five seconds how do i know that so here's how the math on inverters works more or less it's 10 to 1. so if you have a 1200 watt inverter and you're pulling 1200 watts out of it then it's pulling 120 amps out of the battery so if you put a 120 amp draw on a 30 amp battery how long is that going to last even if it did work about 10 minutes okay so 10 to 1 and i realized why people keep trying to do this is because I just, like I said, I just went to Harbor Freight and they have a sticker next to their inverter that shows how long things are going to run. And it's wrong. The math is so wrong. They skipped that conversion step that when you run through an inverter, you lose a, a, a power factor of 10. Okay. Second failure is picking the wrong inverter there is no reason to use a modified sine wave inverter any longer uh, people used to buy them because they were significantly cheaper than true sine waves but true sine waves or pure sine waves have come down significantly in the last few years and now the price differential just like lead acid to lithium batteries the price differential is like 10 or 15 percent and the the ramifications are just not worth it so during the freeze i had a lead acid battery and inverter setup that i built and found out that my electric blanket would not run on a modified sine wave inverter so so I froze for five days. So there is absolutely no reason any longer to use a modified sine wave inverter. Best Tech and Gandale makes pure sine waves that are very inexpensive. I'll put some links below. Okay, So you may run into, into issues with a cheap inverter that you didn't even know about. It's just not worth it any longer. Regarding inverters, number two is picking the wrong size. Uh, some people will buy a gigantic inverter thinking that they can run more stuff. Well, that's true. A 3000 watt inverter will run more things than a 1500 watt inverter. But 
the battery that you're hooking it up to will probably not support that anyway. So if you have a 3000 watt inverter and you load it up with 3000 watts of stuff, you're going to be pulling 300 amps out of the battery. So how long is that battery actually going to last? You're much better off, in my opinion, is buying the right size inverter, which is 1000 to 1500 watts, saving that money and using that money that you saved on a larger battery. This is why I said that a 100 amp battery with a 100 amp BMS is the right match for a 1000 watt inverter because a 1000 watt inverter will pull about 100 amps out of the battery. Now you've got a little bit of a surge capacity in there which is what you'll need for a refrigerator or a chest freezer. You've got a bump of like 1200 watts or so but those two things pair together properly. If you take a 3000 watt inverter inverter and you put it on a 100 amp battery with a 100 amp BMS, you're going to trip the battery and it's not going to do it anyway. If you don't believe me, go to Hobo Tech and check out his test videos where he does that. He'll test a battery till its destruction point you know, or till the point where it will protect itself and shut itself down. So you can only pull so much out of a battery before it stops. Fail number three incorrect wire size. I've seen this several times where someone will buy a two or 3,000 watt inverter and hook it up with eight gauge. You're just asking for a fire. Um, that will heat up like a toaster. That has actually happened to me recently on a charger. I was using wire that was too small. So there's all sorts of wire gauge uh, charts online, but a reasonable rule of thumb that I am using is if it's 50 amps or as a maximum eight gauge wire up to a hundred amps four gauge wire regarding wiring make sure you use good quality wire you have to look really closely on amazon mostly for the chinese the foreign stuff look for term cca which is copper clad aluminum it's not pure copper. It's aluminum wire that's coated in copper, and that's why it's so cheap. It's junk. You want pure copper wire charge controllers. So there are two main types of charge controllers out there, PWM and MPPT. PWM have been around for a long, long, long time, and they do work, but they are not the most efficient any longer. They are significantly less expensive. You can see these popular models on Amazon for like $10 to $20. Uh, uh, MPPTs are more expensive than that, but they're coming down, and it's worth it. Basically, an MPPT will suck the maximum amount of power out of your solar panels and convert it down to the 12 volt to charge your batteries. So definitely, definitely spend the extra money on an MPPT. Picking the wrong solar panel. There is a very popular video on YouTube that I will not link um, that is breaking all of these rules they have a car battery hooked up to a 3000 watt inverter with a 50 watt solar panel on it hey look i created this solar generator for 300 dollars. that will do absolutely nothing okay so you think that the sun is out for you know eight hours a day particularly in the winter it's not Obviously, I live here in Texas, and Texas, Arizona, Florida, Southern California are really good for solar. You only get five hours of peak sunlight, you know, unless you're going to go out there and move your panel every 15 minutes. So I use the number five as my magic number. If you're in the northern part of the hemisphere, you need to adjust accordingly. So if I have a 1,000-watt-hour battery and I have five hours of sunlight, that means I need 200 watts of solar to recharge that battery while the sun is out. So if I have a 50 watt solar panel, I'm going to recover in a perfect world, 250 watts of power out of that. 
these videos that you see of people with these huge inverters with these little bitty solar panels are not accomplishing anything. Again, if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're going to have to double the size of that solar panel because you don't get as much sunlight as we do down here in Texas. So 1000 watt hour battery, five hours of sunlight means 200 watts of solar. So I hope that helps a little bit. I hope that helps explain why a thousand watt inverter matches a hundred amp battery matches a 200 watt solar panel. One of the big advantages to building a system is how much flexibility you've got. Once you have the core components in place, then it's very inexpensive to upgrade certain pieces. I would strongly recommend going to a 200 amp hour battery so you can have a longer run time and all the other factors kind of still come into play but you've got a greater capacity in this sort of scenario it's easy to spend an extra two hundred dollars to go from a hundred amp hour battery to a two hundred amp hour battery and now you've doubled the capacity whereas if you look at the difference between an eco flow and an eco flow delta two where that goes from a thousand watt hours to two thousand watt hours it's like a $700 price jump. In a D DIY, it's a $200, $250 price jump just to upgrade or just to uh, get a larger battery. So this is one of the kind of the plus sides. So I hope that this all kind of made sense. You can see how the, the math kind of comes into play. Uh, another note uh, on the solar is that I, I said this is all in a perfect world. I've never gotten 200 watts out of a 200 watt panel. You know, if it's a little cloudy outside, if the panels are dusty. So this is all perfect world scenario. So if you don't live in, you know, Texas, Arizona, Florida, you know, you really are going to have to have larger solar panels than you think than you need to be able to recover, you know, the power that you're using. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope this was helpful and useful to you out there and uh, drop a comment down below and let me know what you think and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.